Hello everybody, welcome to another Vintage Cube video. We're starting 8 picks in, sorry about that. I uh, had a little bit of technical difficulties right as the draft was starting and I didn't want an auto pick. Um, we led on Thought Seize. It was not that hard of a choice that Thought Seize was really the best card by a lot. Then Verdant Catacombs and then saw third pick Shallow Grave and Vampiric Tutor with nothing else that was super clear. And I thought about it a lot and decided to go with Shallow Grave. Um, I think there's an argument for either one for sure. And then we got, got fourth pick Reanimate, which sort of solidified it. However, in the last pack, we didn't see any black cards, which is not ideal. Um, I do think Reanimator is fairly open, but I was hoping to, like, yeah, we had to branch into Red for Braid. Now we see Liliana, the last hope on the wheel. Not bad. If this was an elimination draft, we could take Scavenging Ooze to hate draft it, but that's not the case. So we'll take Liliana. Good pickup. Not amazing pickup, but definitely a solid one. I would much rather have the other Liliana. All right, sweet. There's a Una's Prowler. I think that is the pick here. We don't have any big boys to reanimate yet, but we have three reanimation cards. I think we are solidly in this archetype, so we'll go with that. I should note into the Triome, we don't know what colors we're going to be playing, but we can find that with Verdant Catacombs. It's a consideration, but let's take the Prowler. And now let's take, I think, just Concealing Curtains, although Scrapwork Mud is kind of tempting. It's a good enabler. I don't think these green cards are very good. Um... I kind of want to just be mono black. Yeah, let's take the Conceal and Curtains and just cut black. It's kind of close. Baleful Mastery now, nice. So yeah, hopefully we can just be mono black and have perfect mana. Um, Verdant Catacombs will be kind of a wasted pick, although it still is not. It's not like completely dead. If we get like, I guess there's actually now they cut Woe Strider. Not a ton of things that would make us need to fill our graveyard in black with like random cards. Okay, Bitter Blossom, not bad. I'm not going to play that in the main deck, but it's definitely a strong card, in certain matchups at least, against Control. So, um, interesting pick. I think I'm going to take the Trespasser. Worm Coil Engine is just not that good. And once again, just like cutting black. Nice. Okay, so black is super open. We are in the open color. That one of Braid pack was weird, but that's fine. So, what do we need in pack two? Well, we need some boys. We don't have anything to reanimate yet. Uh, some of the like big creatures. Huh. Well, Time Walk and Soul Ring is interesting. Time Walk would be great, but I think we'd take Soul Ring here. It's not the best Soul Ring deck ever. Honestly, Mox Jet would potentially be better here. But yeah, I think we do take this card and then wheel like Kite Self Reboot or something. Jace is solid for enabling, but we're probably not going to be playing blue. Definitely can't complain with the Soul Ring. Okay, what do we want here? There's nothing that looks too good. We could take Urborg, but that doesn't really help us yet. Fatal Push is fine, but replaceable. Um, we could take Xander's Lounge if we want to set up to be potentially Grixis. I know we just passed Time Walk, but that's possible. I don't think we ever played Jadar. Lotus Petal could become good if we get to like a really good build with like Grizzlebrand and Entomb, but we're not there yet. So I think it's really between Fatal Push and Xander's Lounge. And I think I will take the Xander's Lounge. Fatal Push is just like... I mean, maybe push is good. We have a couple removal spells, though. Yeah, let's take the Xander's Lounge. Okay, Grave Titan looks good. We'll take that. That's a really nice reanimation target. Blood, like, Blessing Mire could help if we end up with a splash, but yeah, Grave Titan's great. Really good to just put into play on, like, turn two or three off of the combo, and also a reasonable thing to hardcast. All right, somewhat late. Exhum, love to see it. Evolve Sleeper could be card out of the board. I mean, Charter Course would be nice, or Memory Day Loot, or Memory Jar for filling up the graveyard, but we'll definitely take Exhum here. We're a little bit light on waste on discard enablers right now. We have Una's Prowler, but that's honestly it. So, Entomb is the best card we could get by a lot. Putrid Imp would be good too. I guess we can Thought Seize ourselves in a pinch. But yeah, Entomb is definitely the number one card. Um, Grizzlebrand, Atraxa, and Archon of Cruelty would all be nice as well. Um, okay, Mirror Battle Sphere is an option. Ledger Shredder would honestly be good, but I think we're solidly mono black here. And then we could take Rankle, which is kind of interesting. It's a discard enabler. It's a little expensive at 4 mana. Honestly, I'm kind of tempted to take Shredder. 
Definitely much higher upside. It would be way better for this deck than any of these other cards. Yeah, I honestly think I'm going to take Shredder here. With two free blue sources already. The other card, like, we might not end up playing it, but the other cards are just not that good. Now we'll take a Custody Lich. That's a nice pickup. A lot of good white stuff, but yeah, definitely taking the Lich. So we'll see. We have two free blue sources. We did already pass Time Walk. Um, in hindsight, maybe. in Time Walk would be better for the deck than Soul Ring if we have the mana for it. All right, now we see this pack, which is <laughs> some good stuff. I guess we take Iona here. Yeah, Iona looks pretty nice. Wasteland could be good, but we'll take the premium reanimation card. Let's see about this bird advisor. Okay, Titan of Industry versus Phyrexian Flesh Gorger is interesting. Titan of Industry is definitely a better card to reanimate, but F Flesh Gorger is hard castable. I think at this point we're not doing this, at least not planning on it. Yeah, I think I actually like taking the Flesh Gorger here. Ooh, these both wield. That's excellent. I'm going to take either one over Elish Norn. Um, okay, do we want... Wow, this is a close pick. Hmm. I think I like having an another removal spell here. We're a bit light on removal at the moment. Interesting, though. Okay, this was bad for us before. It's still bad. We could play Kogla, but that seems pretty weak, so I'll just take Jadar and not play it. So we have Necromancy, Shallow Grave, Exhume, Reanimate. We have four ways to bring things back. We have three big things. So solid redundancy on the combo. We just really want to find more discard outlets. Um, Yogmoth, I guess, is the pick. Oliphant could get there. Actually, you know what? I'm going to take Oliphant. It's kind of interesting because we can... Um, we can already get Xander's Lounge with it. And then it just is something we can reanimate, potentially. Yeah, that's kind of interesting. We could just play Oliphant, play Xander. I mean, I don't want to do it if Xander's Lounge is the only mountain that we have. But if we get, like, one or two more mountains, then that's an interesting plan. It also does fix us for blue in case that helps us. All right. There's a world where we play Oath, actually. Okay, so once again, number one priority by a lot is Entomb. Number two priority is another elite reanimation target. There we go, baby. Entomb, um, life death maybe on the wheel, but yeah, that's amazing. Also makes it more likely that we're like, just a more streamlined black deck. Okay. There are some good red options here. Like we could pivot towards actually playing black red Still keep the Xander's Lounge, keep the Oliphant, take Zytor with Proving Ground. Like, Seasoned Pyromancer is great. That's the card that's making me interested. Um, with that being said, it's double red. That might be a little too tough on the mana. I don't really want to play another Taps Land in Zytor's Proving Ground. Let's just take Damnation. Yeah, I think this is the pick. Maybe not playing in the main deck, but it's great in some matchups. Now I'll take Dark Ritual. That's pretty sweet. I get the Soul Cauldron, could get there, but yeah, I'll take the Ritual. Really hope you find Grizzlebrand. Or Atraxa, like just a, one of the really premium reanimation cards. We don't see those, we do see Ashen Rider. I think I'd rather just take Voidwalker though. Sneak Attack is also a consideration, but doesn't seem amazing. Yeah, Voidwalker is just like a broken card in a mono black deck. Okay, back to just being streamlined. Um, the Flesh Gorger is only okay. It, it's probably worth playing. It does give us some nice flexibility. I'm seriously concerned about the lack of reanimation enablers, like the discard outlets. Which is why Ledger Shredder looks so good there, taunting us from the sideboard. Okay, so it's tempting to take Corpse Dance. Right now it's not good. This will become good if we get a Trax or Grizzle Brand, basically. I don't think we are ever playing Mystical Tutor. I don't think Gix is playable, really. So we'll speculate on the Corpse Dance. I would love to get there on this, but that will only happen if we get better reanimation targets. There's a Putrid Imp, okay. There's also, like, some removal, but yeah, I'll take the Imp. Good pickup. Come on, Grizzlebrand. Come on, Atraxa. 
Come on, Archon. That is beautiful. This makes this deck so much better with Entomb. Wow. Yeah, that's great. This deck is officially incredible now. Uh, I think we're playing 16 lands, so we could just play it like this with 15 basics. Do we even play Verdant Catacombs? It has no value that I can see other than like deck thinning and paying one life. I think that's probably not worth it, especially because we actually pay a lot of life. Like Thoughtseize, Reanimate, Imperial Seal, Knight's Whisper, all pay life. Very straightforward mana base here. The Magic Online is going to be confused and want to play like three planes in a forest, but the old 16 Swamper. I don't think any of these cards on the sideboard look good. Maybe we do want Corpse Dance now. Ooh, Duress is great. It's Duress versus Mutavolt, but I think we take the Duress. Yeah, this card is really strong. We can cut like Concealing Curtains, which is just a, a worse Duress for this sort of deck. Uh, I think I like having all of these big boys. We can cut Rankle, just a little expensive. Um, everything else here looks pretty good. We could maybe cut Liliana, but I do think it's solid. Not much for us here, unless could we be the fabled Reanimator Pod deck? Maybe we actually can. Maybe not. I own it doesn't work. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'll take it, I guess. I'm not playing anything else, but I don't think we're actually going to get there, unfortunately. That deck does not exist. You need a higher creature count than we have, but that can happen. But not for this deck. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. Um, Kiki Jiki doesn't really help us. Cabal Ritual also doesn't really help us. We could play, take the Zyatar's Proven Ground, but I think that's not really where we want to be either. I guess I'll take this, but not play it. I don't think we're ever splashing red at this point. Still not splashing red. I guess the Soul Cauldron does not work with a track. Yeah, it doesn't work with any of our reanimation cards. I guess we'll, uh, we'll take this if we desperately need a braid for some reason. Actually, no, let's take this. This is Graveyard Hate. Uh, okay, Dark Slick Shores. Gix. Blood Chief's Thirst is actually a card that I do want to play. I think we could play 15 Swamps here. We have a very low curve. We're also playing Soul Ring and Dark Ritual. Yeah, I think we're just gonna go with that. 15 Swamps. Concealing Curtains is kind of tempting. We could cut Liliana and just keep the curve even lower. Because that's just like, it's good against when the plus one is good, but the minus two is not amazing in this deck. Maybe it is good though. Let's see. I kind of like this plan. Concealing curve, like just with 15 swamps, just having tons of one drops and a low curve seems like a good place to be. But no, let's play Liliana. It also does make the Iona a bit better. Sure. <laughs> Excuse me. Wrinkle is tempting. It is a discard enabler. Maybe it's worth playing, actually. Like Wrinkle over Lily or Wrinkle over Corpse Dance. With Reanimate, Exhum, Shallow Grave, Necromancy. Yeah, I think four is enough. All right, yeah, I think I like this plan. So we'll submit like this. This is a pretty sweet reanimator deck. We will add, oh wait, we already have our basics. So we'll submit like this and I will see you in round one. All right, we are on the draw for round one against Segiz Muto, Segiz Mundo. Hopefully we get a nice hand with Dark Ritual and Tomb Reanimate. Hmm. I think we can do better. I do like having Thoughtseize, but yeah, this hand, like any hand with Tomb is honestly better than this. So Mulligan, this hand is really good. Oh my God, this hand is good. Wait, 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 wait. We have the actual dream. We can go turn one, Atraxa, Duress. That's insane. Do we put back Swamp or Voidwalker? I think Voidwalker, it's good, but um, yeah. I, I mean, I wish we were on the play, but this is such a perfect hand. I'm gonna take a screenshot of this actually. 
Weirdly, for some reason my typing is not working when I try to type there. I don't know why. Okay, click there. Okay, maybe I can't take a screenshot, but it's recorded anyway, so it's fine. Untap. Oh, no. That sucks. We were going to put that into play on turn one. That was like the only thing that could we could draw that would mess this up, but still, good position. Dark Ritual. And then we have three black cards in our hand that we want to play. Oh, if they have Force of Will for this, that would be a little annoying. Duress, take their Force. Oh, they don't have it. Uh, okay, let's just take... We don't really care about Collective Brutality. So I think I'm actually weird they're going to take the Fairy. It looks like it's very far away from being cast, but it's better if they... Um, like if they have man, if they have like Black Lotus or something, that could be bad. So again, I wish I could put tracks into play, but we can't. So let's grab Grave Titan. All right, turn one Thoughtseize plus ten power. What are you gonna do about it? That's a solid turn one graveyard, huh? Maybe like the perfect graveyard? This is probably a matchup where we can bring in Bitter Blossom. Maybe Concealing Curtains. Although also maybe not. We might just like have too many cards in our main deck that we already want to play. I actually think I might cut Dark Ritual though. At least on the play, maybe on the draw, it's still good. Like, it was insane here, but against interactive decks, cards like that, that are card disadvantage, become a little bit scarier. Alright, I wish we had Voidwalker, but it's fine. We'll swing on in for 10. So, they need a sweeper here. Balance would do it, or Balance would make it, like, an interesting, longer game. Toxic Deluge would do it. They'd be a 4. But most likely we're just going to be going to game two here. Pretty solid draw. Even if we did draw the attracts of the here, I'll, uh, I'll take it. I mean, in, in some ways this could be better. This is a two turn clock instead of a three turn clock. Solid start. That is for sure. Um, what do we want to change? I think we can side down and removal a bit. Shieldred Edict is probably still worth it, though. I'm just going to call it Belfal Mastery. Go a little bit more threat dense. Bring in the curtains. Bring in Bitter Blossom. And we could cut. See, I don't. Well, do any of these other cards look good? Not really. Judar's kind of weak. They don't have a lot of graveyard stuff that we've seen so far. Maybe it's wrong to cut the Baleful Mastery. Maybe we don't play Better Blossom, actually, and just, like, try to combo them. Yeah, that seems good. But I do stand by the Blood Chief's Thirst for a Concealer Curtains Exchange. Discard, car discard spells are important against decks like this. This deck looks sweet. Because Phyrexian, or, uh, yeah, Phyrexian Flesh Gorger is kind of bad here, but I think it's still worth playing. Just for the flexibility of being able to play it as a 3-mana creature as well. All right, good hand. We'll definitely keep. We don't have a way. To, we don't have a big boy in our hand yet, but if we draw one, we can reanimate on as early as turn two and just have a good mix of lands and spells and a good curve. We do have like all of our top end, funnily enough, like or at least our castable top end. We have our only four drop and one of our only three drops. Dark ritual, interesting. Um. I think we don't ritual out anything here. Like, Ritual Liliana doesn't seem that impressive. I guess we could... No, let's just play Concealing Curtains. This is why Dark Ritual is... <laughs> well, yeah. We could have cut Dark Ritual. Since if we have it in our opener and we're not using it, that's not a great sign. But I think this is still fine.
Brainstorm, sure. So the, the argument for Terminal Liliana is that I might just like be able to ultimate, go to four loyalty immediately, then like five on turn two, six on turn three, seven on turn four, and then ultimate on turn five. So if they can't deal with Liliana in play by turn five, that would just win the game. But that seems, you know, they could play Teferi, tuck it, they could bounce it. Like there's a lot of stuff that punishes that. And if they do stop that plan, we've accumulated no value along the way. All we've been doing is gaining loyalty on Liliana. They just give her the loyalty. It's not like we drew cards or killed anything. Like all other planeswalkers would actually be accumulating value while doing that. If I had Liliana of the Veil, I probably would have fired it off on turn one. We can rankle on turn two if we want to. Which could be worth it. Or we could just draw a Tracta. Or a Tomb. Or Vampiric Tutor. Or sorry, Imperial Seal. That set up the turn three combo. This is, that was an unnecessary amount of thinking. I mean, they're gonna draw one of the cards immediately. Maybe they have a fetch land. Oh, interesting. Okay, heads up play by the opponent. They've got a troll. We could just put that into play next turn. Is that worth it? Probably. Hmm. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna put the 6-5 into play. Um, we could also flip Concealing Curtains. That's kind of interesting. Yeah, I'm actually going to do that. Or is it... Hmm. Yeah, let's go Dark Ritual, flip Concealing Curtains, reanimate. Interesting. Um... I think we take Mind Twist here. They can Imperial Seal for something, that's fine. So hit for three on turn two, and then we can hit for nine on turn three. Not quite as impressive as our last game, but we're still, we, in both games we have uh, nine or more power and we've played a discard spell by turn two. And we saw just like plenty of gas, we can continue to develop. They, if they have a sweeper, they could play Imperial Seal to find their board sweeper. Then we get to hit them for nine. Seems like a good position. I guess if they, they can Karmic Guy to bring back their troll potentially. If they kill our troll. Pretty good position here. They play Hallowed Fountain untapped. That's a little scary. Then they pass, sure. So let's just get in there. Oh, it looks like Vendillion Click. If they play Click, they have to take our Lily. Okay. Swing for nine. If it's a Shark Typhoon, oh, unexpectedly absent. That's annoying. That's super annoying. They just top decked that. Man. So they're down to 12 now. Play Lillian Plus. They're going to be able to put that troll into play with their Karmic Guide pretty soon. I feel like they should have put it on top, not on, not below the top card, because now they can't, like, I think they would kind of want to draw it and then be able to immediately cycle it so that they can Karmic Guide on turn five. Now they can't Karmic Guide until turn six, or they can't Karmic Guide for the troll until turn six. Next one we can Rankle and hit them for seven, potentially. Our sideboard card kind of putting in work, although it also did draw them a card. This is not card advantage. They get to replace the card that you take. 
eye horror crazy creature type. Cool design, honestly. Like the flavor works well. Um, it's like powerful, but certainly not broken. Some interesting decisions to it. Still a solid card all around. A lot of helicopters fly outside of the house. It's pretty cool. Sometimes I'll see them like, picking up stuff from the street. Or there's often like a large crowd around them watching. This guy right now is banking a pretty hard turn. Okay, Colonnade is one of the cards they drew. So they have one unknown. The Imperial Seal for something. They're not drawing the troll. This is going to put them to 10, and then we can put them to 2. But we don't really have burn in this deck. What's our best draw here? I don't know. Our deck doesn't top deck particularly well. I mean, that's often the case with combo decks. But we have a lot of cards that, like, you know, it, like a reanimation spell wouldn't do it. If Addy wouldn't do it, like an entomb wouldn't do it. So, and those three cards account for much of our deck. Okay, they find whatever they find, and pass soul ring. Okay, so I'll play soul ring. And then I'll play Rankle. We're going to attack with everything. We're going to discard the Putrid Imp and then minus the Liliana. So send in with both. So let's go. Each player discards a card, then each player draws a card and loses one life. Oh, Masker Worm. They can bring that back next turn. Let's minus our Lily. We can bring that Putrid if we need to, but I'd obviously prefer to hit something else. Wow, that's some action. Let's take Murderous Rider. Land go. So if they play Karmic Guide, bring back Masker Worm, we win. They, they don't kill any of our things. They did just play Imperial Seal, so they can draw something good, presumably. Okay, they just played the Karmic Guide, so that doesn't do anything right now. They're done on board. Swift end this. Good thing we got the Swift end. Um, I, I thought they would have been dead either way, right? Yeah, because uh, they both have some form of evasion. So we come in. They, I guess we'd just attack with this. No reason to attack with Rankle. But we actually did have Lethal either. What? Oh, no, no. I was like, did I misread this? But no, they misread it. It has Menace, so they cannot block with only one creature, and we win the game. Pretty solid. We're 1 0, 2 0, kind of. See you in round two. All right, round two on the draw. Oof. His hand is like close to being really good, but it does not do anything, so we will mulligan. Hoping to find Entomb once again. Oof. Alright, going five. Okay, we'll keep this. Put back two lands, I think. If we find a reanimation spell, then this is great. I mean, we could definitely... We could go turn one, discard, turn two, reanimation spell. On a... And that's a pretty strong draw. Let's lead on the Duress. Okay. I'd rather them pierce that than pierce the reanimate we're about to top deck. If we draw a brick, do we play the Putrid Imp? I don't think so. Oh, huh. Okay, I'll play Soul Ring. But yeah, no need to play the Imp. Um, <clears throat> I don't want it to get killed and then we just can't discard this Atraxa. Okay. John Giant, looks like he's playing a 4-drop. 
Oh, or Tinker. All right, we'll see what he gets here. Turn three bolts to send it all through. A duress is definitely not bad. Okay, Venture doesn't actually do anything, but yeah, this is probably going to be a tough one to win. We're on the draw and mold of five. That's kind of how it goes. Baleful Mastery. All right, let's just pass. Got a couple removal spells, but not removal spells that target Bolas' Citadel. Okay. Just as we have all game, just hoping to find a reanimation spell. Also hoping they play a creature or a planeswalker. Okay, chalice for zero, just to clear the top of their deck for a bolus of citadel. All right, a lot of artifact mana over there. I don't think I want to kill this Venser, although there's an argument to it. You know what? Actually, I am going to kill this. This is why I I like their life levels kind of low. I want to establish a threat. Getting a two three into play is actually kind of a real card here. If their life total is low, and um, and we have another removal spell. Man. Unfortunately, like we could hard cast Grave Titan here, but or Lich. Custodian uh yeah, Custodia Lich. But we cannot cast Traxa. Tough game here, we're just doing nothing. Um we can just see more of their deck, I guess. So they're playing a lot of artifacts. Artifacts are tough for black decks to deal with, so we just need to hope that, like, to just do our combo before they do their combo, kind of. I think I will cut some of the removal, and you see here, like, we have a lot of removal that's not that helpful. Backfade and steal the soul ring. Not great. With ritual, though, we still have four mana in case we find necromancy or something. This is big. Mirror Battle Sphere. All right, I'll take a draw step and then we can go. Well, I guess we could theoretically still win. If we found Shallow Grave, and we could hit them in the air with haste. No, they can like kill it. Uh, I'm just gonna concede. Mental health concession. Um, and, alright, so we go to game two, we get to be on the play this time, which is nice. Let's cut some of the removal for some of the discard again. So, we can cut Blood Chief's Thirst. Um, do we want to play any of these other cards? They don't seem amazing. I wouldn't hate a 16th land. No, we, we can run it back. Yeah, I think we can run it back. The Dark Ritual Soul Ring, we have a, such a low curve. I think that was a good five. Um, we didn't draw any reanimation cards, so we weren't able to do anything, but that was like, we had a lot of draws that would have turned that into a very powerful hand. I think that's better than the average four. Okay, this is definitely a keep. Turn three, Atraxa. Do we want to Entomb on turn one? I think so. It kind of lets them know what's up, but it helps. It prevents against us drawing the Atraxa. We could also play, go for Iona instead. They have a lot of colorless cards, though. I think Atraxa is probably just going to be better. Atraxa might be able to just set us up with Iona anyways. Do we play around Spell Pierce here? I think we do. Uh, it sucks that they know what's up. If they have Spell Pierce, it's going to be hard to play around now. We don't really lose anything by waiting this turn on the Entomb, though. Unless we draw a 2-mana reanimation spell, but I think I'm just going to hold. Play Land Go. Okay, I'm going to Entomb in response, because this plays around Spell Pierce. 
grab a track saw. Dot C's, good draw. I'm gonna play that, it does mean we can't go for it this turn. I think it's still worth it though. We can take a Tinker through Spell Pierce. They might not have Spell Pierce also, but I, I still think it's correct to play around it here. Okay, they didn't have it, but they do have Tinker. So we'll take the Tinker. They still will not have mana for Mystic Confluence next turn. Go for Main Phase Thirst. So they do get a few more looks at the Spell Pierce. I think we still go for it though. I mean, yeah, especially with them having Mystic Conf. Oh, they don't even, they play Mountain, so they can't have Spell Pierce. All right, land, Necromancy. See what we hit. Okay, so we can take a land, a creature, an artifact, and a sorcery. Which one of these sorceries do we like more? Probably Exhum. Yeah, I'll take the Exhum. We have Rankle as a discard outlet. Sure. All right, pretty solid. We get to draw back up to seven cards. We have a 7-7 seven, seven in play. They can bounce it, but we can continue deploying threats. So I'm just going to go to combat, they're going to bounce this Atraxa probably. I mean, they could just take the hit from Atraxa once. I don't want to play Rankle though, and just let them go like counter Rankle, bounce Atraxa, draw a card. That's doing exactly what they want us to do. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to start by attacking. Venser. Okay. That's not too bad because we can um, now just take their Mystic Confluence. Yeah, I'll just fire that off now. All right. Taking the Confluence, passing back. And we can start casting our threats now. Do we want to get Rankle down? I mean, Rankle does let us potentially put tracks into play. That's probably worth it. So we'll go land, Rankle. Attack with both for six. They can't block. We're gonna have to discard a couple cards to hand size here. That's okay. Good problem to have. Each player discards a card. Alright, happy to see no creature there. And we'll play our Zoom. If they counter it, they counter it. If they don't counter it, we're just going to keep on going off. Alright, so we'll take Land, Soul Ring, Edict for an instant, Imperial Seal for a Sorcery, and then do we want Lich or Voidwalker? Let's take the Lich. And we're going to have to discard a couple cards to hand size, which is, again, a good problem to have. Gonna pitch two, I think it will be Swamp and Flash Gorger. Sure. So they're dead on board. If they somehow deal with our board, we can rebuild really quickly. Our electrode's high, yeah. Very solid start from this deck. We did lose one game, I guess, but this deck oh wait, that was only game two. Right, right. Match two, game two. Uh, so now we're on the draw for game three. Do we want to make any changes? I don't think so. 
yeah, let's run it back and hopefully have a comparably good draw. Entomb? Oh man, this hand is interesting. Entomb is our best card, but the rest of the hand is pretty trash. Yeah, I actually think I'm going to mulligan this, especially having the attraction in the hand makes the Entomb worse. Alright, this seems good. Let's keep and put back Ritual. Mountain Go, okay. Uh, I'll duress first. I, uh, yeah, let's duress. They're playing Brain Freeze. Interesting. Okay, I'll take the Tinker. And then we're going to try to take Coalition Relic, which takes them off of blue mana. You can play the Everflowing Chalice for one, that's fine. Well, this is a Citadel. Okay, we'll take the Relic, and their hand is super awkward. We're kind of far away from doing anything ourselves, too. But if we can find a big creature, if we can find Imperial Seal... That does give them their blue mana, but still, they are pretty far away from doing anything. They don't have any black mana. Let's get the Lunar's Prowler down, which actually could just be a real clock here, just attacking several times. I wish this Baleful Mastery was a threat right now. I mean, I guess Gix would be nice, but there's no way it's correct to be playing Gix here. Alright, hit for three. Kind of anemic draw. I mean, I guess Double Thoughtseize into three power creature isn't that anemic, but our hand is definitely looking awkward here. Hoping to just find in two, any of our big creatures, Imperial Seal, Knight's Whisper. All right, take three. Fairy Beatdown, I guess. Maybe it'll get there. All right, like zoom, not a good draw. Man, this is such a funny situation. Let's go to 11, uh, like status quo favors us, I guess. I mean, I don't want to get brain freezed out, but they need a lot of stuff to make that happen right now. And they don't even have a big graveyard. They don't have that much mana. I guess six mana is kind of a lot. Memory jar, okay, that's really scary. Yeah, that's actually a huge problem. That's like one of the best things they could possibly hit. Hopefully they crack it now. That, that'd be a terrible line, though. They should save it for next turn, then they can play a bunch of stuff on their main phase off of their seven new cards, and then Brain Freeze in their end step. Yeah, that'd be terrifying. Oh, man. It sucks that they have this memory jar and we can't interact with it. We need to find something out, like good soon. Alright, nothing to do here. Just take a draw. Liliana, okay, let's... Liliana minus. It does make it a little easier for them to kill us, but it gives us two more looks at finding something with, for Zoom. Okay. Man, this is so awkward. They discard Brain Freeze, really? Okay. Double reanimation spell, double removal spell. Okay, Lotus Petal. They crack the memory jar. Are you serious? We still don't find a single big creature? What? Jeez. I mean, I guess we'll reanimate Voidwalker next turn, but that's... Kind of insane. Um, we've got through over half of our deck. Probe, yep. See that we got nothing over here. We'll see, we, we'll see what they can do. Brain Freeze is gone. If they find Underworld Breach, they got us. If they play like Mere Battlesphere, I think we can. Potentially beat that. Lots of mana over there. Okay, 
Okay. They're digging. Down to six mana. What are you going to do with six mana, homie? Dak Faden, okay. Uh, Breach would still do it because they can replay Petal for extra mana. They're down to three mana right now, but they could go up to like a little bit more than that. Lion's Eye Diamond. Talisman, okay. Then Zend, okay. So we're hoping to find like Iona. Man. Okay, so let's go Shield or Edict to kill the Dak. Each opponent sacrifices a Planeswalker. Oh, okay, bad sequence in here. We're supposed to um, exhume the Dathy Voidwalker first. Hit for three and pass. And now they can, um, I guess they still actually can't play Bolas the Citadel. So if they take this, they... Okay, they discard Mountain, sure. So they're just hoping to top deck something. They're at 7, they're dead in 2 attacks. We still have Baleful Mastery up if we need it somehow. It's really just Underworld Breach that I'm afraid of. I don't think there's anything we could do to make Breach not kill us. Okay, they top deck something big. Is it Mirror Battlesphere? Yeah, that is... Beatable. Not bad. Alright. Kill one of these things. Play land. Attack with both. Okay, they don't discard a card, which means they're dead next turn, no matter what. Baleful Mastery this. Maybe we don't even need to Baleful Mastery that, but it seems fine. There's nothing to bring back. Kind of crazy that we've gone through this many cards and still haven't found any of our creatures, but, I mean, they're dead. They have to top deck this turn. They, it's Underworld Breach or Bust, pretty much. We don't even know they're playing, but they probably are. They can kill our Lily if they want to, that's fine. No! Oh, that's so frustrating. Ah, that was the last draw that could have done that. So they can pretty easily brain freeze us and win the game. We can use Voidwalker in our upkeep to cast something, but I don't think there will be anything that would do it. That's quite frustrating. I and mean, granted, they did go through a lot of their deck, but we went through a lot of our deck too. If we found Iona, you better bet we would have had an Iona on red. Oh, actually, maybe blue is still better, just to shut down the brain freeze, but... Okay, it's possible they can't kill us. I feel like they almost definitely can. The... Um, okay, they probe, yeah. Storm is two, they need to get Storm of six. Not having access to the DAC hurts. But they can't fill up their graveyard more. Because, like, Lotus Petal, if they crack that, it gets exiled to the Voidwalker. 
So they can cast two things from their graveyard. Actually, wait, on board, I think we can win, but they might have something. Okay, they play land, that's good for us. They can play Thirst for Discovery from their graveyard. Okay, they sack that for blue, Bulls the Citadel goes to exile. Sure. So now they can play Thirst for Discovery to put them in, storm up to three, and they're hoping to get like somehow two creatures that two cards they can play out of that. We can cast no no, we can't do it. We can like be able to cast Bolus of Citadel in our upkeep, but that even if we could, it wouldn't win. We don't have enough permanence. And um yeah, that if they bring three just they're gonna kill us. If they bring three just enough. We have 16 cards in our deck. They need to get pretty lucky off of this Mystic Confluence. Oh, right. Bummer. Okay. They didn't brain freeze us in response, which is kind of interesting. Now we find a lot of our big creatures, although still not even all of them. Um, yeah, no, this hand doesn't matter. We just need to hope they drew a burn spell off of their, um, but no, if they had a burn spell, they could still just kill our Voidwalker, so I don't think it'll work. But yeah, they can Brain Freeze us for lethal now. We can Brain Freeze them back, but that doesn't do anything. Wait, maybe, oh man. So we could have not killed their Mirror Battle Sphere, and then, oh my god, we actually could have won. In our upkeep, we could have, like, they attack us, but we don't care, that doesn't kill us. Okay, Venser to bounce the Void Walker, okay, never mind, then actually that does go back to meaning that they have lethal, or that we can't do anything. They bounce their Mox Diamond, okay. Yep. So now they bring through their last nine cards. The only way we can win is if they have a burn spell that they discard to this memory jar. Which I think is super unlikely, but I'll play to my outs. But yeah, if we had had Baleful Mastery in our hand, we could have done it. Because we could target, we could Baleful Mastery, letting them draw a card. Um, and in response, Brain Freeze, Storm would be two, we would mill their four cards and then we would kill them. We'll see what they have here under this memory jar. Magma Opus! Let's go! <laughs> it says we draw two cards. I think that means it's a draw. Oh my god. Crazy situation. Um, yeah, I think this is going to make it a draw. I hope it makes it a draw. I also wish we could choose to not draw two cards, but we cannot. We can also put a creature into play at instant speed, but none of these would do it. Right, nothing would like deal damage, then we don't have Archon Cruelty. Okay, so Magma Opus, cast it, we'll do 4 damage to you, tap 2 permanents, and I think this makes it a draw, good game is a draw, begin sideboarding, okay, wild, wild situation. All right, we'll take it though. So go to another game three. 
Do we want to make any changes here? So they're like, they're full storm. Uh, I got the Soul Cauldron as Graveyard Hate. I think that's worth it. Um, Graveyard Trespasser is good too. We can cut, I think, Murderous Rider. Shieldred Edict seems kind of bad. I guess we'll cut that too. But I will keep one Baleful Mastery. And yeah, we'll run like this. Alright, on the draw with a keepable hand. A little bit light on lands, but still definitely reasonable. I like that we have some graveyard hate. If they have a fast tinker draw, it could be bad, but it's alright. We'll go land. Um, I guess I'll play this. If they have spell pierce, it's annoying, but high upside. Okay, that resolves. Dak Faden would also be annoying. If we draw black source, we can conceal in curtains. Nice, let's definitely do that. This can take either Tinker or Dak. Whoa, okay, well we'll take the Tinker. A lot of action. But yeah, definitely want to take Tinker here. Um, we can, it's going to be kind of hard for us to, like, if we, ideally we can exile their instance with our Graveyard Trespasser, but that might be hard. Okay, they probe, sure. The priority is to get Graveyard Trespasser into play as soon as possible, just so we can take cards out of their graveyard. Here comes Monolith. Yep. They have five mana up. <laughs> okay, so let's start by typing for three. I think I'm gonna play the trust the next whisper here. If it, if they counter it, that's fine. Okay. So we could put we could like Threaten to put Iona into play here, but that does not seem worth it because they can just easily deal with it. Let's cast Graveyard Trespasser, I think. Yeah, I'll cast the Trespasser. Could also cast Flesh Forger, but I think this is better. This sort of makes them use the counter, and then we can hopefully get um, Future Dome next turn. Oh, they don't go for it. Interesting. Um... I'm gonna take Tinker here. They're just gonna draw three in their end step? Oh no, Cycling Magma Opus, huh? So they, uh, that's kind of annoying. They can cast that with Torrential Gear Hulk, but then we get to put Iona into play, and that should win the game. So they're deciding how to magma opus now. Okay. This seems fine, unless they have like a... Yeah, Spell Pierce wouldn't do it. Another huge creature, all right. So let's play Putrid Imp. Discard Iona to get flying. Cast... Exhume, and then we can cast a Frexian Flesh Forger. And if we shut down their blue spells, it seems very hard for them to win. Discovery discovery response, yep, makes sense. They're holding Mystic Confluence and then a bunch of unknowns. 
Huh. So they get to bring back their own triplicate titan. Okay. Interesting. I think we're still getting Iona here. Does this have Vigilance? Jeez, yeah, we can actually lose this. That's insane and like pretty annoying, but oh well. So bring back Iona, name blue. They can't cast any more spells. We can't cast this. In, yeah, I think I'm going to cast this with prototype. Then we pass turn. And then that triplicate titan is a quick clock. Yeah, are we just going to die if we don't find a removal spell soon? Maybe. Take nine. Untap. That's a bad draw. Um, how much we can do here? We can at least get another draw step. I mean, maybe we could try to kill them on our next attack, but I think it's going to be tough. And if we lose the Iona, we definitely lose. So we can get Future Jump flying here and go to one. And then try to kill them on the backswing. Man, Thirst for Discovery and a Triplicate Titan was not playing around that. Exhume, obviously much, much worse than any other reanimation card we could have had there. Can't double block it, unfortunately. We're close to being able to. Okay, don't care about that. Removal spell? Void Walker. Uh, that would have done it before the thirst. Are we just dead on board? I think so. I mean, we can survive if we leave back Iona. No, now we're just dead. Man. Yep, alright, GG. Crazy match. Very crazy match. See you in the finals. Alright, back for the finals on the play against Kayakak. Kayakayak. Kayayak. Not sure, but we'll keep either way. Great hand. Very good hand. We don't have a reanimation spell right now, but we can dig for one with Night Whisper. And also just like Voidwalker on turn two is pretty strong. It's been like an hour and a half. I just got off of a long FaceTime with a friend, but from your perspective, it was instantaneous due to the wonders of technology. Do we just jam this in tomb? It means we can top deck Shallow Grave or Exhume and do it immediately. I think that is worth it. It does like expose it to potentially like Lion Sash or something, but I still think it's right to do it. Okay, turn one self of spirit, that's fine. We will entomb. We're having a Traxa. Ha! That's exactly, that's why we went for that line. It worked out well. So we'll take land. Um, I think Shield of Edict is going to be better here. About Seeds over Duress, Liliana, and then Pugidimp or Wrinkle. Probably Wrinkle. Yeah, seems good. We're gonna have to start two cards to hand size. This will be Grave Titan and Knight's Whisper, maybe. Knight's Whisper is kind of good. I think I'll still discard though. So next turn we'll probably go Voidwalker Thoughtseize or um, Shield with Edict Thoughtseize. Or actually wait, Liliana kills Selfless Spirit.
pretty strong start. They need to, I mean, they used Alst already. So, okay, they Solitude, sure. Feeling pretty good about this position. We'll go to 27. That's like a 8 for 1 or something. They hit us for 2, and then what's their follow-up? They don't play a creature. Hmm. I think I'm actually going to Thoughtseize first here. Just clear the path of like a scary planeswalker. Oh, ha. Huh. Okay, this should be not too hard to win. Take two, then we'll Liliana. Good draw. I think I'm still going to Liliana here, though. Hit for three and pass. Hmm. Not bad. We have a few ways to deal with it, though. So Liliana's gonna die. Um. Okay, I think the best way to do this is to just go. Each player sacrifices a, a non-token creature. Then we'll cast their Atari. And we'll reanimate Grave Titan. I guess if they kill this, they can theoretically bring it back from their graveyard with their rebel token, but yeah, I can't really imagine why they win from here. We have lots of stuff on board. We have a high life total, yeah. So, like Mardu Aggro or something like that. Let's bring in Damnation. I don't hate Concealing Curtains, just as a big booty blocker. Um, what do we not want? I think Rank was a little expensive. And maybe Knight's Whisper on the draw is worse than Concealing Curtains. Yeah, I think I like this plan. We ended up bringing in Concealing Curtains every match. Maybe we should have just played that in the main deck. Okay, definitely a good hand. Soul Ring is not amazing here, but it's fine. We can... If we find... Yeah, Imperial Seal doesn't help us yet, but we have a lot of things that would make that a combo piece. And we can flip our Concealing Curtains on turn two. Duress, interesting. I think I'll play Duress. Well, I wish I could take Adeline. I think I'll pick the Souls. It's awkward if they top like a Black Source. Maybe we just take Oust. I don't care about the Oust that much, but yeah, we'll take the Oust. And then play Planes and Pass. Liliana, interesting draw. So let's play this and play this. Pass, and if they play out of line, we can just take it out. If they play Linger Souls, Liliana can deal with one of the tokens. Out of line, okay. So. How do we want to do this? It's a little bit mad efficient to just be awful mastery this, but I think that is the right line. And then do we want Imperial Seal for anything? I'll just do this and pass. Not the most exciting turn, but I think that's fine. Um, they can play Lunar Souls, we can kill one of them. They are going to get to clamp one of them. They're pretty good. Hopefully we find a land so we can play Liliana plus flip the Concealing Curtains. Oh, alright, well, now Liliana's not looking so good anymore. Yeah, I mean, they could definitely outgrind us. They just drew four cards. Voidwalker. 
All right, so we'll play Voidwalker and then flip this. I wish we could have had Voidwalker before they cast the Lingering Souls, but this is fine. Looks like they have a Solitude. So we're hoping to find a Reanimation Spell or an Entomb. And then Imperial Seal can find the other one. Yep, there's the Solitude, fair enough. Taking out the Concealing Curtains. No, taking out the Voidwalker, okay. Whoo! I will take that. Like, they can't cast it right now, but it's just so good. Yeah, Wasteland is uh, pretty funny. I think we have no non-basics in our deck. They can flash back the Lingering Souls, unfortunately. It's just four men to draw four. Pretty good. Hopefully they don't equip this. Nice, we get to Liliana. Don't have man don't have the right like Man, the situation to be able to also hold up murderous or swift end, but that's okay. Reprieve. Oh, brutal. Wow, max punish. We could have played around that, actually. Jeez. Well, it's gonna be tough on the win. They're gonna get to draw a lot of cards. We need to eventually find a combo piece. Yeah, pretty awkward there. I should have played around pre No reason not to. That's the only card in the format that would have punished us there, but might as well play around still. Cauldra. <laughs> okay. We still actually win the, win the race, race, I think. Man, drawing another land there is not what we wanted to see. Um, we have enough land to just cast Grave Titan. I think I'm still, I mean, we can also just find, like, Shielded Edict, but I think I'm also just going to take a normal draw step and hold up Swift End. It's close, but I just really, like, it's so much better to reanimate Atraxa or um, Iona than just to just, like, cast Grave Titan here. Maybe that's wrong. I'm down. Okay, that's pretty good against our removal spell. They go for the equip. Oh, Dante Vanguard, okay. Now they'll probably equip here. Ooh, okay. In response, let's swift end this, I think. I don't know, maybe we're supposed to the Selfless Spirit. The thing is, they, if we target the Selfless Spirit and they sacrifice it, then we don't get to cast our 2-3. I think we're going to lose this game, though, and have to settle this in game 3. Reanimate, okay. We can reanimate Solitude. Or get set up to combo kill. I kind of like bringing back Solitude though, actually. They can re-equip this cauldron to anything that we put it on. Or that we, that we, uh, like if we kill, there's no point in killing the germ token here. Yeah, honestly, let's do this. To reanimate this, we are taking five, but we're going to get start gaining life. Take out the Rebel token. Actually, no, we'll take out Adanto. 
Only giving them one life, which is relevant. Swing for three. This is a miss, so they can't block. They go to nine. Cast this. And then do we want to play... I think I will play the Imperial Seal now. It does mean we have to block, unfortunately. But... Okay, do we want to get Phyrexian Flesh Gorger? Or... Grave Titan? Or Custody Lich? Custody Lich is interesting. Let's actually get that. And then if we can kill this token, we might be able to take out all of their creatures. Look, we're going to take out Solitude, that's bad. Yeah, yeah, they got us. We know what we're drawing. Okay, so we lose game two. Game three, we're on the play now. It should be a good matchup. I'm not too worried about this. Do we want to bring Knight's Whisper over Concealing Curtains? Yeah, let's do that. Should be a little bit more in on our thing, not worry about them. I still want to have Damnation for sure. Could even cut Voidwalker actually. I think I like Voidwalker a bit more. All right, so we're on the play. <laughs> uh, so we could just pass and then go to discard on turn two and then reanimate on turn three. That means we're missing two land drops though. That's pretty bad. Interesting. So we could also just keep and hope we find a discard outlet. Or we could mulligan. It's like crazy to mulligan a hand like this, but I think I actually am going to do it, weirdly. Um, like our, I think our deck just has... Yeah, I think this is this is solid. So we'll keep, put back... Baleful Mastery. Once again, there's an argument to holding this, but I think I'm going to play in case we draw something big so we can Shallow Grave immediately. Mother of Runes, that's fine. Uh, that's actually pretty good. Let's just bring back Custody Lich. Yeah. Huh. I think I like this plan. Come to the Monarch on turn two. Hit them for five. Take out their Mother of Runes. Looks like they have Solitude. Solitude and this doesn't do anything. They could Solitude the Custody Lich in response to us becoming the Monarch if they want to. They don't though. That would mean that they don't sacrifice the Mother of Runes, but we would still be the Monarch. Alright, Solid turn 2. We kill their one drop and hit for 5 and became the Monarch. This deck is good. Shielders Edict can take care of their next creature. Lingering Souls would be bad, though. Stone Forge Mystic, okay. Don't love it, but I think we're still in a good spot. They take Glimmerlands, but they might have Calder in hand. Interesting. Um, I think I'm just going to Shielders Edict here. Each point sacrifices a non token creature. I definitely don't want to accidentally pick the wrong one here. I have to do this in past, holding up Putrid Imp. It's a little bit better if they have, like, Rabble Master so they don't get to become the Monarch. And then next turn we can try to find another thing to reanimate. No point in reanimating one of the... I mean, we could bring back their Mother of Runes, I guess, but I think I'd rather hold the reanimate here. We can play Glimmer Lens if they want to. I take her, okay, don't really care about that. Okay, nice whisper. Come on, big creature. Nice. So we'll try to eye on white. Can't solitude this. Play around Man of Tide, which is not in the format, but Play around it anyways. Worth noting that that Knight's Whisper was much, much better than um, 
Concealing curtains there. Alright, it's full name White. It's possible that they could come back somehow, but I think it's pretty unlikely. And they concur. Alright, so 2 1, couldn't quite get the trophy, unfortunately. Um, the deck was great. Weird, uh, weird match against Storm there for sure. With a draw in the middle there. But yeah, the deck was great. We had a good low curve. We had um, Soul Ring, I guess. Uh, Entomb, Reanimate, Exhum, just like classic Reanimator deck. I wouldn't have minded a little bit better targets, like Archon and Grizzle Brand would have been nice, and then also just more discard outlets. We didn't have that many good ways to discard from our hand. Um, that's an area where splashing blue or black can help. Like, we got to play Future Dimp and Unus Prowler, but like, Ledger Shredder or Jace Brinch Prodigy or Fable of the Mirror Breaker, Faithless Looting, like, those are kind of better versions of that. Still, though, pretty sweet league. Reanimator's broken. Everyone knew that, but certainly true. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.